What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Never miss out on the best daily baseball content on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Framber Valdez, who had 8 Ks in 4 innings. He did give up 4 runs, but had this nasty mix of curveballs, even got swords on him, and cutters, especially this back foot cutter, as well as his nasty two-seamers. I also like this. You can see the line that Fromber draws down the mound to make sure that his body stays in the right direction towards home plate. Just another one of those little cues that help a pitcher keep their mechanics consistent. Fromber's ERA this year is now 2.84. Hunter Green showed off his 100-mile-an-hour fastball, his nasty sliders, and this 92-mile-an-hour changeup on his way to racking up eight strikeouts in four innings. But he gave up six runs. I know this is Colorado, but that's still a lot. His ERA this season is now 4.5. But keep remembering, he's only 23 years old, and there are going to be these bumps in development. I'm impressed he's breaking out his changeup more because that pitch will serve him well down the road. George Kirby had six Ks in six and two-thirds innings, giving up only one earned run. He relied on his fastballs of 96 and 97 miles an hour, and threw this absolutely disgusting curveball. Look at that thing go. Here's George Kirby's curveball grip uh, with Logan Gilbert as his pitch so grip model. Because George forgot his baseball. Um, I've been spiking. I have never changed my curveball grip once since Little League. Um, I kind of go more in between the seam. Um, I, put, I put a decent amount of pressure with this. Um, and I hook it, my middle finger around that seam. Um, and like we talked about a little before, I, I try and focus. I like to look at extension whenever I'm on track land, bullpens. Um, that way I know I'm like tunneling it well with my fastball. Um, and I just have like a good wrist angle and arm slot. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm in the same place. I kind of have it on the seam. Uh, that way it's kind of like a cue, for, a cue of mine. Um, just so I can like feel it off, off the scene. And if you like these interviews, make sure to subscribe to this channel because there's a lot more where that came from. Kirby outdueled Tanner Houck, who had these sliders, sinkers, splitters, and cutters, and had five Ks in five innings, but gave up four runs. David Peterson had these sliders and got a sword. He had five Ks in five innings, but gave up six earned runs. Alex Wood had four Ks in four and two-thirds innings. He gave up two runs and had this slider and fastball. Alec Manoa really struggled. He had seven walks, gave up five runs in four innings. He did have some nasty pitches, including this slider and this two-seamer that had 21 inches of run. But Manoa isn't a high strikeout guy, and if he's walking seven hitters in a game, it's going to be a long day. Shohei Otani had five Ks in seven innings. He gave up five runs and, and three home runs, two of them on sweepers. And there were a lot of people during the game saying Shohei is throwing his sweeper way too much. And you can certainly make that argument. He did only throw 27% sweepers for the game, which is lower than his season average, and had a 40% whiff rate on the sweeper for the game. And only four sweepers were put in play, two of them for home runs, but two others for fairly weak contact. To me, the bigger problem was the sweeper really wasn't breaking as much as usual. He had three inches less horizontal movement for this game than his season average and two inches less drop. And when you're doing that, you're going to miss some spots. Here's an overlay of a Codify heat map for Adam Frazier. And you can see this sweeper was pretty much in the only spot that was red. If that sweeper had the normal break on it, it probably would have been in the blue. That sweeper only had 9 inches of horizontal break, and Shohei averages 17 inches of horizontal break. So his normal sweeper would have been a good pitch. This one, not so much. Shohei's sweeper is no doubt still one of the best pitches in baseball. However, he may be getting a little predictable with it, throwing it at 47.5% of the time this season. And when it's not as sharp, it does end up in the bat path some. But I also think some of this stems from the fact that Shohei was getting blisters earlier in his career when he relied on his splitter, which may be his best pitch. 
so the sweeper is a way to put less pressure on him to throw splitters because those blisters cause him to come out of games early. Here are some overlays of Shohei's sweeper and splitter, and you can see how well those two pitches play together when he throws them. And this one is kind of sick. This is a really good sweeper from Shohei with a splitter, and you can see how far inside that sweeper starts out, and then it breaks way past that splitter, ending up off the plate. To me, I think the key is for Shohei to be a little less predictable on his sweeper usage, and as long as that sweeper is sharp, he'll be fine. What do y'all think? Should Shohei throw fewer sweepers? Leave me your thoughts in the comments. Shohei also threw a lot of cutters this game, which he doesn't get a lot of whiffs on. I think he only had one whiff on it this game, and he threw it more than he threw his sweeper. Shohei threw 14% splitters this game, way up from his season average of only 5%. Two years ago, he averaged throwing that splitter 18% of the time. But again, he also had blister problems. But the big story of this game wasn't Shohei's pitching. It was Shohei being king of the pitchers who rake club. Check out this absolute monster bomb he hit. It's as if he was angry about how he was pitching and took it out on the baseball. Shohei needed a double in his last at bat to hit for the cycle and instead just flipped this opposite field single. But in my alternate universe, he stretched this out to a double. Of course, he changed uniforms somewhere between first and second base. Don't know how he did that. But I don't put anything by Shohei. Shohei outdueled Grayson Rodriguez, who had these 97 and 98 mile an hour fastballs. And I overlaid his fastball on changeup, and you can see how good that combo is when he's right. But he also got hit hard this game, giving up eight runs in three and a third innings and only had three Ks. Again, another very talented young pitcher who's going to take his bumps and bruises, but that doesn't diminish his talent. Merrill Kelly had these change-ups on his way to nine strikeouts in seven innings, giving up only one earned run. Pablo Lopez had four Ks in four and two-thirds innings. He did give up five runs and had this fastball for a sword and this wicked sweeper. He battled Noah Syndergaard, who had this cutter, sinker, and curveball, on his way to 5Ks in four innings, giving up two runs. Charlie F. and Morton was outstanding. Morton had 10 strikeouts and only one walk in six and two-thirds scoreless innings. His curveballs were ridiculous. He threw 52% curveballs this game with 20 whiffs on his curveball. These curveballs topped out at 3,236 RPMs. Look at these things. Morton had good fastball velocity, too. His Fastball topped out at 97 miles an hour, but most of his Ks were on curveballs, and they were disgusting. Jack Flaherty had an excellent outing yesterday with 10 strikeouts and 7 scoreless innings, giving up only 3 hits. And his fastballs, change-ups, sliders, and knuckle curves. And here's an overlay of his fastball knuckle curve, so you can see how those two work together. And when that knuckle curves on, it is deadly. And I think this game represented a big jump in the relationship of Wilson Contreras and Jack Flaherty. But my filthiest starting pitcher of the day yesterday was Michael Waka. He was outstanding. Waka had a career-high 11 Ks in seven one-hit innings, giving up no runs, and he relied heavily on his change-ups, which, as I've said before, is one of the best change-ups among starting pitchers. He got 10 whiffs on his change-up this game out of his 18 total whiffs for the game and threw 36% change-ups. Now, he also had his curveball working and painted with his two-seamer, but this was really a change-up story. Here's an overlay of his fastball and change-up, and you can see how much that change-up drops off. Pure filth. And then, if you're sitting on a change-up, here he gets one fouled off, he followed it up with an elevated fastball in that same tunnel as a change-up and got the whiff. So he can use his change-up as a put-away pitch or to set up a fastball. Just a dominant game by Michael Waka. And now onto my filthiest relievers. Jeff Hoffman had this changeup and fastballs. Jeremiah Estrada had these upper 90s fastballs. Hector Neris had this nasty splitter. Brian Baker had this dirty slider. Evan Phillips had these filthy sweepers. Johnny Brito had this nasty curveball. Lucas Sims had these wicked sliders. Look how much movement those had. 
Brent Suter had his funky windup and this changeup and fastball combo. Daniel Bard painted with his fastball. Ryan Stanek annihilated the side with this heat. Just overpowering stuff. Camilo Duvall had these six sliders. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Joan Duran. My man was throwing 103 mile an hour fastballs and 98 mile an hour splinkers. And here's an overlay of a 98 mile an hour splinker with a 103 mile an hour fastball. And holy crap, good freaking luck. Filthy, filthy stuff. Oh, that's right. We are back. Bring some hitting to the pitching ninja show. I'm going to start off this week with, dare I say, Aaron Judge's controversial Don here. That's what he's looking at. Yeah. What is that? Where is he looking? Where is he looking? And he did and it more than once. Yeah. 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 It's really, really unusual. You don't want to go, you know, throwing allegations around without knowing, but. And he pummeled it. It seems like the Jays announcers were onto something here as Judge lambasted this ball 462 for his new friend. Next, we're on to Jorge Soler, who Ooh. hit oh. this ball so hard, it reminded me of when Kenny Mayne used to say, get this man the finest meats and cheeses in all the land. <laughs> Just an egregious home run call for, for an egregious home run. But the long dong of the week goes to Ronald Acuna Jr., who's been just hitting the dick skin off the ball. Crushes this ball 470. He hit one 454 last night. He's, he's got one over 440 for the last five weeks. He's a long dong legend. And that's your dong. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. This might be the lowest pitch ever to get a swing and miss. And he swung. That's an out. He swung. That's a live ball. And that is the end of the inning. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Josiah Gray for 5Ks or more. Then take Luis Castillo for 5Ks or more. And top it off with Kevin Gosman for 8Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 